491 seniors walked across the stage at Pine Knob during the class of 2024's commencement ceremony. Friends and colleagues gathered together to say goodbye to outgoing Superintendent Ben Kirby at the school administration building. The Lake Orion community came out on Memorial Day to honor those who gave their lives defending our country with ceremonies, a parade, and a 5K race. And Township Supervisor Chris Barnett arrived at Wally Edgear Chevrolet to pick up the first electric vehicle in the Township's fleet. Hello, I'm Lexi McKinney. And I'm Stacey Calloway. We'll have those stories and so much more on this edition of ON TV News. As the school year winds down, it's a bittersweet moment for Lake Orion High School's 491 seniors who walked across the stage at Pine Knob. There were several moving speeches and musical moments, and it was the final Lake Orion commencement for outgoing Superintendent Ben Kirby. Here are some of the highlights. As you step into the next phase of your journey, I encourage you to embrace this mindset. Embrace the fun in tackling challenges that seem impossible. Remember that the journey of possibilities is continuous. Every day brings new chances to learn, to grow, and to make a difference. Seize these moments with confidence and a sense of adventure. The world is waiting for the unique contributions that only you can make. The future is not a predetermined path. It is your canvas awaiting your brush strokes. Paint it with the colors of your dreams, your passions, and your hard work. The possibilities are endless and they are yours to explore. And always remember, it's kind of fun to do the impossible. Congratulations, graduates, and best wishes for a future filled with boundless possibilities. Whether you are moving on to the military, learning a skilled trade, vying for one of the over 2,000 jobs that will be filled at the GM Orient plant, or moving on to college, you have the foundation to be successful. Dragons, the world is a better place because you are in it. You are to be commended for your perseverance, teamwork, flexibility, and collective efforts to protect the thunder that got you here tonight. You are dragons for life. You are the class of 2024. Congratulations and go dragons. We came to LOHS ready to make it count and we are leaving as leaders. Our diplomas will be proof. We were greeted with the ideas of strength and the ability to su succeed here each morning, hearing Dr. Haas tell us, make it count, be a leader. Let Dr. Haas's consistent motto live with you. I hope with all my heart that each one of us cherishes these precious moments we have spent together. There is a universal truth we must face. Everything eventually ends. As much as I've looked forward to this day, I've always hated endings, but endings are inevitable. We now have to say goodbye to the thing that has been comfortable and familiar for 13 years. Enjoy your new embarkment in life. Challenge yourself, smile, and be brave. Continue to grow, grow your dreams and passions, but stay rooted firmly in your soil and never forget that you're a dragon at heart. Without the friends that we have made over these four years, I don't know if we would be the people we are today. The good and the bad, it has created bonds that are unbreakable. I believe that everybody has an impact on one another, whether they realize it or not. There are so many people who have shaped us into the individuals we are proud to be. And with that, I would like to thank my mom and my dad for shaping me into the young woman I am today and for never giving up on me, no matter the circumstances. Parents, guardians, and parental figures in the audience, your constant love and support means the world to us, and we would not be here without you. We are each lucky to have a great community standing behind us. So thank you friends, family members, staff, and everyone else who has played a pivotal role in all of us being here today. With that, I would like to congratulate my fellow graduates. Today, we celebrate our accomplishments, but also the endless number of possibilities that lie ahead of us. Here is to the class of 2024 and all that awaits in our futures. Thank you. Protect the Thunder's entire message is about the understanding that you are never alone and you always have people there to back you up and to be your safety net. In closing, as we wrap this up and get to stage time, I just want to simply say thank you, seniors. 
you had a phenomenal year. And your leadership has given LOHS a solid foundation for the future. Be sure to always take pride in your accomplishments and ownership in your actions. You're going to do great things. And remember, your LOHS Thunder is always right here supporting you. Thank you. Go Dragons. Class of 2024, will you please stand? Please move your tassel from right to the left. Congratulations, Dragons. You have now graduated. Congratulations to Lake Orion High School's class of 2024. Of course, you can watch the ceremony in its entirety right here on Owen TV and on demand on our website and YouTube channel. Visit OrionOwenTV.org for more information and to view the program schedule. Following the retirement of former school superintendent Mary Janopoulos in 2020, Ben Kirby stepped into the role right smack dab in the middle of the ongoing COVID pandemic. Now, four years later, the superintendent is moving on to face new challenges in a new district. Recently, friends and colleagues came together to say goodbye. On Wednesday, May 29th, the Lake Orion Community Schools Board of Education was joined by other community leaders, colleagues, and friends to say farewell to Superintendent Ben Kirby with an open house in honor of his dedication and accomplishments over the past four years. The Lake Orion Community Schools Administration Building on Lapeer Road became the place to be at 3.30 p.m. with the Chamber of Commerce, Orion Board of Trustees, members of the village and downtown development authority congratulating Kirby on his new position as superintendent at Forest Hills Public Schools. Kirby will continue working with the district until the end of June and is set to transition to his new district in Grand Rapids, Michigan on July 1st. Kirby began his role in Lake Orion in 2020 with the pandemic creating new obstacles that challenged the district. He says those years brought out the strengths he has acquired as a leader. It's a pleasure to be uh, an employee at Lake Orion Community Schools and be able to get to come to work. But the, the feeling of being a dragon is something unlike uh, that I've experienced in other um, school districts. So everybody rallying around being a dragon, whether it's our elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, we all have the same purpose, the same drive, the same passion, and that's what's really different about Lake Orion. Over the course of two hours, friends and colleagues popped in to share memories and wish him well as he begins the next phase of his career. I'm looking forward to uh, figuring out what is my reason for going to Forest Hills? And that's one of those things when I got here, I knew it didn't take very long to figure out why why I was put here. And um, and I do anticipate that being the same when I go to Forest Hills. I know there's some, some things that we're going to um, attack and overcome. And it was kind of the same thing here when I came in. Like I said, COVID was here. Um, there were things that needed to be done. And um, with my experiences and, and my beliefs and philosophy, I was the right fit at the right time. And I do think that's going to be the same as I move into Forest Hills and work on some of the challenges that, uh, that are there. Kirby is from the west side of Michigan and his goal was to eventually move back there with his family. He added that this position does not open frequently and the timing was just right, so he knew this opening was the perfect opportunity for him to take. As his time with the school district winds down, we asked him if there was anything he wanted to say to the Orient community. Just a big thanks, a big dragon thanks, and uh, I finish everything with Go Dragons. Although he's not involved in the hiring process, Kirby told us the school board is hoping to hire a replacement by August, in time for the start of the 2024-25 school year. For more information, visit lakeorientschools.org. Although the first day of summer is still a few weeks away, the garage sale season is already in full swing, with signs popping up all over the place. Recently, Orient Township got in on the fun and offered bargain hunters a chance to do some one-stop shopping. On Saturday, June 1st, Orion Township Parks and Rec hosted their annual outdoor community garage sale. 25 vendors set up in the parking lot of the Orion Center offering clothing, home decor, kitchenware, and a whole lot more. 
Inside the Orient Center, more vendors sold a wide variety of collectibles at the Toy and Comic Expo. Admission and parking were free to the public. We also decided to double down on our events today, so I also have the puzzle swap, mm. and I have Shred It coming from 11 to 1. Oh. Fun field packed day. At 11 a.m., residents lined up to take advantage of the services provided by Shred It. Not only does Shred It offer secure document shredding, but they deliver the materials to paper mills for recycling and repurposing. It's an eco-friendly alternative to incineration, and again, this service was provided free to visitors. Why do I do it? Because um, it's fun. It gives residents an opportunity to sell some things they don't need or just come and shop and be outside and just, it's just a community event. It's just, it's good for everyone. Be outside and enjoy being outside. If you missed the event, Orion Township Parks and Rec will host another outdoor community garage sale in August. In the meantime, Parks and Rec will celebrate the first day of summer on June 20th with Summer Sizzle, a free family event offering food, games, and entertainment at the Orion Center. For more information, visit orionparks.com. Memorial Day falls on the last Monday of May, and for many, it marks the unofficial start of summer. Originally known as Decoration Day, it was created in the years following the Civil War and became an official federal holiday in 1971. Here in Lake Orion, the community comes out to honor those who have died for our country with several ceremonies, a parade, and a 5K race. On the morning of Monday, May 27th, more than 350 runners and walkers arrived in downtown Lake Orion to kick off the first of several Memorial Day events. The 8th Annual Orion Veterans Memorial 5K began with runners gathering at the starting line near Children's Park for the 5-mile run. <laughs> Then the rest of the participants lined up for the start of the 5K race. I get so excited when I see the community come out and the support for our Veterans Memorial. It really warms my heart and I love to see everybody here on Memorial Day. Orion Township began hosting the 5K race in 2017 to act as a fundraiser for the Orion Veterans Memorial. The skies were gray and there was an occasional drizzle, but the Lake Orion community once again came out to show their support. So this year we have so many wonderful local sponsors. We have at our diamond level, we have Shana Roofing, Dort Financial, we have GFL and Pulte, along with so many other locals. We couldn't do this without their support. So we're out here today for the Veterans Memorial. This is the only fundraiser they do, and all of the proceeds from this go to the long-term sustainability of the beautiful memorial right there on Odana and M24. Finishing first overall was Lake Orion's Alexandra Pollock, who also won the recent Dragon Dash 5K at the Orion Center. He finished with a time of 1928.2. We just like getting a good workout in and seeing people in the community getting out and about and enjoying the town. The weather was pretty nice. It didn't even feel that humid even though it just rained, so it was pretty cool, good running weather. Uh, and the course really wasn't too sloppy for how much rain we got, so it's nice, flat, pretty fast, and not too windy. The first female to cross the finish line was 17-year-old Leah Zarilli of Shelby Township, who finished with a time of 2139.4. Uh, to run just with my friends and family and to just honor those who have served our country. Lake Orion native Eddie Cromwell ran the course wearing a 35-pound rucksack. He'll attend college on an Army scholarship, then serve for four years after completing college. So I did run cross-country and track for Lake Orion High School, so with that, that prepared me to have the, the support in my knees to be able to go with a ruck on. So right now I have a ruck, it's 35 pounds, so to be able to do that is preparing me for the Army with my ROTC program. Seeing all these people together, how, how does that make you feel? Um, it makes me feel great, yes, to know that there's people who are um, willing to come out and be able to run and then to show support to people who have served our country and who have given their lives to be able to fight for the freedoms of America. It's such a great thing. All participants received a medal as they crossed the finish line, and VFW Post 334 Commander Jim Hubbard was busy handing out many American flags. 
As the race came to an end, veterans and members of the American Legion Post 233 gathered in Children's Park for a small ceremony. Post Commander Steve Hawkswell got things underway with a solemn speech. Then Ladies Auxiliary President Sandy Boyd dropped a wreath into Paint Creek to honor those who lost their lives at sea. The flowers may wither, but the spirit which they are the symbol will endure until the end of time. As you know, th this is this is very special to us because there have lot been lots of folks who have given their lives for us, and that's what it's about. Uh, my father was a POW in the Battle of the Bulge, and all those folks came home luckily, but those are the lot of them that didn't. So this is done for those folks who, who are, are, have given their lives for us. At 11 a.m., residents began to line the streets of downtown Lake Orion for the annual Memorial Day Parade. Parade left Blanche Sims Elementary School and made its way down Flint Street to Broadway. There, Commander Hawkswell introduced the Legion's Veteran of the Year, Oxford resident and Arby veteran Bill Quinn. Once again, I give you the mighty Quinn! The parade then continued north on Broadway and included Cub Scouts, military vehicles, and of course, the Lake Orion Dragon Marching Band. The final ceremony of the day took place at 1 p.m. at the Orion Veterans Memorial on M24. Bob Smith acted as MC and welcomed those in attendance. Retired U.S. Navy Captain Matthew Butkus delivered the Memorial Day address. So thank you all for taking the time to remember the reason behind Memorial Day. Reflect and recognize those who made the ultimate sacrifice, those who lost their lives in the service of our nation, in defense of our freedom, and defending our way of life. We pause from our busy lives, take a few minutes of solemnity. solemnity. It's not, to put, not intended to put a damper on the weekend, but on the contrary, that we should live our lives to the fullest and acknowledge that their sacrifices have been worthwhile, that their sacrifices were not in vain. VFW Post 334 Commander Jim Hubbard introduced 2024's honored veteran, retired U.S. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Cynthia Wright. Thank you very much for this honor. Um, I am an abundantly blessed person. I know that. I thank God every day for that. Part of that blessing truly is being part of the VFW and involved in our veterans ministry at our church at Lake Point. As an award winner, I promise I will do the very best to honor you and represent my community and make a difference in all we do. Thank you. After reading the names of those lost in all conflicts since the Civil War and honoring the veterans who passed away over the past year, the ceremony concluded with a gun salute and the playing of taps. The parade and ceremony at the Veterans Memorial were recorded in their entirety and can be seen on Comcast Channel 10. You can also view them on demand on YouTube and by visiting orionontv.org. The staff at the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce has been busy lately with numerous events and ribbon cutting ceremonies almost on a weekly basis. Recently, the Chamber welcomed a new business right in the heart of downtown Lake Orion. On Thursday, May 30th, representatives of the Chamber of Commerce, Lake Orion DDA, dignitaries, friends and family gathered in downtown Lake Orion to celebrate the official grand opening of Epic Realty with a ribbon cutting ceremony. So on the count of three, one, two, three, Epic Realty! absolutely incredible. Um, just the jumping into this, I had no idea what I was getting myself into, um, but the opportunities to sit on uh, boards with the Downtown Development Authority, member of the uh, Chamber of Commerce, um, and just 
uh, collaborating with my neighbors. I was in the, you know, um, Accent on Art twice today. I was talking to my neighbor at Amazing Puddles earlier today, too. I've got my owners from uh, Chic Boutique and Better Toms are at this event right now. We're really a community and everybody is coming out and supporting each other and it's really, it's lovely. Founded in 2021, Epic Realty is a national real estate brokerage based in Houston, Texas. The Lake Orion branch is made up of 12 partners and primarily serves North Oakland County, but also includes Grand Blanc and Shelby Township in their service area. From my family that's here, my agent partners that are all here with me, um, I, our state broker who oversees 200 and almost 300 uh, Epic agents in the state of Michigan showed up. Um, it's, it's an incredible, but more so to have um, Chris Barnard and Matt Gibb and Janet Bloom and uh, Joyce Donaldson show up for me and to support this and be happy that we're here. It means everything for somebody who's lived in this community for close to 30 years. In the metro Detroit area, interest rates are up and fewer people are selling their homes, forcing buyers to compete for fewer properties at higher prices. Sandra Wood offered advice to those in the market for a home. Well, the first thing you do is you need to have a very experienced loan officer um, if you're taking out a mortgage that is in incredibly important who's educated you on that whole process and then you need to have a really um, experienced um, real estate agent who's representing you who knows how to navigate this for the past really four years it's been an incredible difficult uh, market for anybody to succeed in as, as far as with buyers. Uh, first time home buyers, make sure that you are asking the right questions because there are programs out there to help you with down payment assistance. Um, I know that unfortunately the rates are very high right now. It's not going to last forever, but we can, you know, a good agent, and there's a many good agents in this area, um, they can even help you structure your purchase to bring down the rate for the first couple of years to make it affordable until we do have some some rate relief which eventually will come um, but you know it, it could be it could be a year or so for more information you can contact Sandra Wood at Epic Realty by calling 248-408-5323 as GM continues to make modifications to their Orion assembly plant to produce the Chevy Silverado EV Orion Township jumped the gun and added the first electric vehicle to their fleet ONTV's Joe Johnson has the story on Tuesday, May 21st, Orient Township Supervisor Chris Barnett visited Wally Edgar Chevrolet on Lapeer Road to take ownership of one 2024 Chevy Silverado EV. With the purchase, Orient Township becomes one of the first municipalities to add this electric vehicle to its fleet. This particular truck comes from GM's Factory Zero Detroit Hamtramck Assembly Center, but GM's Orient Assembly Plant is currently undergoing major modifications to produce this same model in Orient Township. Now before you go running to the Lake Orion chat room to complain about the cost to taxpayers, the township supervisor tells us the purchase was made thanks to a grant. And the amazing news for our residents is we're paying zero dollars for this beautiful $77,000 truck. Uh, because we're able to find a grant through the federal government, um, an energy efficiency grant that we met the criteria thanks to Ashley Coyle and Sam Timko in our office. So we're getting this beautiful vehicle uh, that will be a, a pool fleet vehicle for our employees to use. Um, and, the, and the pride, uh, you know, of the folks from the UAW that are building this car down, in, this truck down in Hamtramck and who will build it right across the street. We can literally see the plant from Wally Egger Chevrolet. Uh, and again, we're super excited that we're here at Wally Egger one of our strong dealership community partners. They sponsor everything in our community, uh, but to be able to, to get this vehicle here has been uh, just awesome. This is the first one that we have that we're selling and it's uh, going to the township. We're just excited to be a part of, you know, the, the first delivery of the Silverado EV. Um, they're going to be building them here in Orient Township, so it's it's really a uh, really great opportunity for us. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're special vehicles. Uh, it's got 100% charge right now. It's 385 miles. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a bit. It, it's going to beat out the competition for sure. Uh, this truck is is uh, just a work truck right now, but the trim levels go all the way up into, you know, premier uh, trim levels, and, and we're excited to see what comes in and, and, and uh, you know, in the next couple of months to, to the next couple of years. Supervisor Barnett told us he hopes this truck will be the first of many electric vehicles added to the township's fleet over the next several years. I mean, these trucks are a little more expensive than the than the um, the traditional fuel-consuming uh, trucks, but for us, it makes so much sense just on fuel savings. 
I mean, I just looked at the range on this thing, it says 385 miles at 100% charge. Um, so for our building, our ordinance enforcement, our parks and rec, our public services, look, we can plug these things in every night. And to not have to do oil changes and not have to, to fill up at the, at the pump, uh, you, the five or $8,000 uh, higher cost for the upfront cost of these vehicles will be easily realized in savings over the years. And then the other thing is just supporting what's happening here. Um, we will be a Chevy Silverado EV fleet as long as I'm here. We want to support that what they're going to be building across the street uh, and, and put, it, put our money where our mouth is. And, and really, um, this is the driving force of our local economy for the next several decades is what's happening here across the street at the plant. Do you see infrastructure meeting the demands of this vehicle? Yeah, I think it's going to take time. Um, you know, that, that stuff is, it's, it's expensive to install, it's expensive to develop, and that, that stuff is coming. Um, there's, it's only, you know, it's really only a matter of time until we see the charging infrastructure able to keep up with the demand. I think that uh, here, here locally at the dealership, we're starting to put chargers in. We just put in four stations over behind in our service department. Um, we made some improves, improvements to our service department to be able to handle some of the electric vehicles that were starting that are starting to come in, and that includes the Silverado here uh, in the community, uh, right there at the township. They started to install some chargers, and the and the government is really, you know, from a from that standpoint, they're stepping in to help too. So whether it's through grants or or through tax credits or or what be it, um, there's going to be a lot more infrastructure coming in the next you know three four or five years and i think by by the time that the ev fleet is full and we have more evs that we're selling through the dealership by the time we get to that point we're going to have an infrastructure capable of supporting what's out there the orient assembly plant made the switch to all electric vehicle production in 2020 and is planning to have the first chevrolet silverado ev roll off the assembly line in late 2025 from Wally Edgar Chevrolet in Orion Township, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News. Thanks, Joe. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ON TV News. On behalf of the hardworking ON TV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. And I'm Lexi McKinney. See you next time.